Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Jerry. How are you doing, Andy? Keep it up, mischief. For yes. once. Do I need to say hello? Make it natural. Hi, Andy. Where's Fred? I'll give him a chivvy. I am Eliza Kidd. I'm Rona McDonald. I play the trumpet. I play the double bass. And I have been in the orchestra for five years. I've been in the orchestra for four years. I think um, Wilson was invited as well, but we're not entirely sure if he's going to manage with the Zoom. Yeah, he doesn't do technology. <laughs> he hasn't, he's still got a wind-up phone. Hello, my name is Julia Murray. I'm Millie. I am Romy. I'm Leon. <laughs> Hi, Ruth. Hi, sorry it's a bit late. <laughs> nice to see you all. Can you hear me? I'm Layla. Uh, I play violin. I'm Alex. Uh, I'm Ivo. I'm Zen. And I play the cello. Oh, snap. I'm Kitty, I play the viola. I'm Beth, um, I play the oboe and I'm still in the orchestra. I'm Anna Jenkins. I'm Ashley Hastings. I'm George. Wait, what instrument do I say? Fred. Fred says he's waiting on the invite. I'm Katrina. I'm Ali. I'm Ailey. I'm Anna. I'm Evie. I'm Summer. Hello. Hi Trish. How's Hello, everyone doing? Oh, hi. Hello, hi, Bob. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hi. Oh, Jenny, <laughs> hi. <laughs> you guys are... Perfect. Perfect to me usually doesn't go in the same sentence, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eliza, why did you move room? I'm a bit offended. How can I get us to go to landscape? Well, I'm going to Alaska, that's right on there. Are you doing a jigsaw, Trish? <laughs> I am. Hi, Fred. Are you doing it as in the Skype call? Uh, so, my name is Chris Mansfield. And my name's Rachel Smart. My name's Jack. My name's Emma. My name's Rachel Black. My name's Jenna. My name's Andy. If you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, Oh, hey. 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 <laughs> Is this exciting? I'm Jessica. I'm Rita. I'm Holly. I'm Ray. I'm hey, Jerry. I've okay. read all these books. Behind me, yes. <laughs> I'm Anna Mackenzie. I'm Ava Meehan. I'm Shona Russell. Um, I'm Katie. Yeah, you're warned to watch what you've got behind you, haven't you, in these things? <laughs> <laughs> I can see that everyone's hitting the booths. I moved all the gin off the counters just to make sure that it wasn't anyone in sight. <laughs> I'm Joe. I'm Brendan Norris. Hey, I'm Dylan Hutton. I'm Max Root. I am Trish the Bass Tutor. Whee! Whee! <laughs> 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 That's it. That's it. Hi. Oh, okay, right, we're recording. Oh. What is your earliest memory of GSSO? Well, I went to go watch the concerts when I was like a little bubba because of my siblings, so I guess that got me into it. I was in like the string orchestra or voice factory and you got to sit and watch like the other people play, like the older ones play and they'd play like sleigh ride and all that and I just remember thinking that they sounded so, so good. <laughs> Uh, so my first memory of uh, DSSO was uh, as being the trombone tutor, uh, turning up to my first course, and there was no trombones. Um, so that was that was that was great. Uh, <laughs> we were about 25 minutes late leaving because one of the trumpet players was late. I can't remember her name. Uh, one of the trumpet players turned up. All the tutors were like, "Where's Eliza? Where's Eliza?" Oh, it was, it was you guys. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I remember waiting around for Liza. I'm so sorry. You made up for it, it's okay. <laughs> In the medieval times of, I, I guess it would have been 2004, walking into the upstairs room at City Hall, and I was late, naturally. I only went to, in my final year at school, and I arrived late, so I got a bus, and uh, it was pouring of rain. And I, I walked up the driveway, absolutely drook it, and arrived at the glass doors where there was an orchestra rehearsing. And <laughs> I couldn't get in. Everybody kind of laughed and pointed right the, <laughs> round the corner. So that was, I, wasn't, I wasn't too happy about it. <laughs> the whole orchestra is, uh, is playing away. I go and sit down. I set my music up. I hadn't practiced any of it but I was relieved to see that nobody else had practiced either because the thing sounded absolutely terrible. We got to a certain point of of the piece and basically everyone just stopped playing because no one knew where they were, but Jerry just kept conducting. <laughs> and uh, I just remember sitting there with no one playing and the whole group just burst out laughing. Yeah, I remember my first audition. It was with um, Andy and Leslie. So I, I played a bit of a piece and then he went, ooh. And then we did a duet and it was really lovely. Um, oh, that's nice. In your audition? Yeah. I remember after my audition, because that's when I found out that I was the only Obo, and I was like, well, they have to take me now. My earliest memory, it was semi-traumatic, but it was the first year that I joined, and I was so, like, trying to read the music. 
that I didn't read and I didn't see the bits where it said like solo. So I was like butchering it. And then Andy was like, okay, just stop. Julia, you don't need to play. I was so embarrassed. My earliest memory was just turning off the turning off balls, not having not having a clue what to do. And then having to take the, the register. So obviously I didn't know any of the kids' names. I was just having a proper stress running about the bus trying to count people's. And I just thought straight away I should not be on this trip at all. Um, but luckily everyone was uh, was very helpful and helped me out. I was in a dressing room, didn't know anyone because I didn't really know anyone at GSSO. And I was sitting there and I thought, no, I've got to be brave. I'm going to go and talk to someone. And it was Bethany Eason. Hey. hey. <laughs> so this follows on from Jack. So we started the same time. Same thing, I didn't really know when they had no idea what was going on. And then to make it even worse, the first violin tutor, Wilson, had to go home on the first night. So then I ended up tutoring the first violins and doing all the house staffing. But yeah, it was all quite a stress, but I did enjoy it. And the smart, like, pestering me about joining orchestra for so long. And like, but I'm so happy I like actually like went through with it because honestly, it's been so good. Yeah, yeah I think most of the, the early parts were just pure fear. Having to practice outside the bass tutor's room when I was 16. He made me practice of an evening outside his room. I'm glad you don't make us do that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that was the moment when I realised it was going to be a really phenomenal, fun community to be a part of. Yeah, Fred Parry and um, a cello instructor with Glasgow now and have been for quite a number of years. Well, when I first went, the, the, the cello tutor was a woman called Grace Dick, who mm. was a legendary, quite stern cello teacher in Glasgow. And I was sitting in the back, I remember being told off for sitting in the back of my seat. And I said, but Adrian Shepherd sits in the back <laughs> of his seat. <laughs> I was shouted at and I was told to go and apologise to the first violin tutor, who was the leader of the SNO at that time, Sam Ball. And I had to go out there and, and say to him, I, I, I have to apologise to you. And he said, what for? I said, because I accused Adrian Shepherd of sitting in the back of his seat. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, he does. <laughs> so I went back in with a smirk in my face. Um, but I don't think she ever really took to me after that. I wasn't one of her pupils. I mean, I was looking, I was looking at some of the old photos. And of course, you forget that it was really the summer holidays. We had this boat trip to Rothsea each year on the legendary Gay, gay Queen. Gay uh, Queen! The, 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 the boat named the Gay Queen. And so everyone piled on this, on this boat and, uh, and took the trip over to Rothsea. Of course, at that time also, the, the, it was when all the nuclear submarines, the American nuclear submarines, went up and down and so the gay queen kind of navigated between these nuclear submarines um, <laughs> nowadays you know health and safety would would have would be appalled at what uh, basically once we got once we got to rossi the children were all let to do do their own thing and we just uh, went to the pub for the rest of the time you know that was it <laughs> So uh... we knew you did. We knew you went to the pub. <laughs> I joined as a, a tutor in the nineties, and obviously it was in Castle Tower at that time. And my first day on the course, um, everyone on the staff spent the whole day talking about, you know, how haunted the castle was. I'd gone to bed, and at some point during the the night, it must have been maybe two or three in the morning or something, I could hear this tapping outside. And I thought, that's really <laughs> strange. So I went and opened the curtains and outside it was a football with a face drawn onto it. <laughs> um, a coat hanger, a coat hanger sort of sellotaped <clears throat> to it. And then a white concert shirt over the coat hanger. And it was being dangled down from the room above and tapped off my window. So I went off to investigate, up to the room above me, and there was the great Sir John Maxwell Geddes, <laughs> absolutely creasing himself. That was really my first memory of just the sort of man that John Maxwell Geddes really was. 
<laughs> Do you remember the year we had the Russians over from Rostov and Don? Yes, gosh, yes. Amazing group of young musicians that joined the orchestra and they came with their children. <laughs> the children that year were so kind. The kids came with the clothes, literally they had the clothes that they wore and a change of clothes and that was it, they had nothing. Um, and I remember the kids all um, contributing and they, and they bought each mm. of the girls from the quartet a, a, a Sony Walkman. Do you remember that? Yes, that was amazing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And we, we got the, the tutor, we took her into um, Janun and she thought this was paradise. Uh, places like Mackay's and she was going in and she had no money and, and we all would kind of said you know you can, here's some money go and get stuff and she thought it was amazing and we took her in to get her hair done she never had her hair done in her hairdressers. You wonder what Rostov's like if Danun's <laughs> paradise. <laughs> <laughs> really, there used to be the US naval base at in <laughs> and uh, that year a lot of the girls with the translator and with well, the with the lady who went along to a night out. They were all invited to this evening in the, the, the naval base. So they were sitting in the US nuclear naval base and the guy who's doing the disco is saying, oh, so who's here from France? Who's here from such and such a place? Who's from England? People, are, anyone here from the USSR? And of course they put their hands up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they rushed into the nuclear base. <laughs> but we used to also go swimming. We'd go down to the end of the, the driveway care. and across to the pier and swimming. I don't think we'd be allowed that now, somehow. Um, yeah. But it was, uh, that was just something <laughs> that, that we did. And of course then there was the the Sunday march to the church. Unless you were a Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> that your excuse, Fred? We get doshed off to the, to, into the room. We have to get the bus into the room. <laughs> ah, yeah, we have to walk. <laughs> I remember getting caught out of going to the Church of Scotland because they gave you cake, but I was supposed, I was brought up Catholic and I was supposed to have been on the bus to go into the room to go to church. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm going for the cake. I think an important difference between then and, and now as well is that in those days it included private schools. In actual fact, in many ways, gave it a, a, a richer cross section of society. It broke down a lot of barriers, Fred, because yes, I, uh, I went for the yeah. first time to Largs High School and I shared a dorm with girls from Notre Dame, Kings Park, all over, and we would do our smalls and hang them outside in the windows, and we used to get into trouble. We got into trouble quite a lot in Largs. Larks for all the uh, you know, things, but in those days we'd take over a school and stay in the classrooms in beds. It was extraordinary. That's right, but yeah. I, I met people. My best friends now are friends I met in orchestra camp, and yet that same friend, her son, was in the orchestra with us a few years ago. Quite often, it was the first time you actually met you actually met people from a different religion, and then realised yeah. that they were actually, they were actually much the same as you. The great thing about music. <laughs> It's a great thing about it, getting together. Excellent. Do you remember with the, the midnight walks and we used to oh, yeah. 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 Like, and literally plough like, through the staff to get out the castle? They knew we were going on the midnight walk and they would all stand at the top of the stairs, you know, and then everybody would just barge through and I think they just kind of made a pretense of, you know, trying to stop you and then just let you go. What they started doing after that was putting all the mattresses down in the, That's, uh -huh. in the rehearsal area. You had to carry a mattress upstairs. I gotta tell a funny story about that. There was a trumpet player called Daisy. They used to have these, you know, going to the girls' dorms, and he was out going to the girls' dorms, but he got caught. And they said, Where are you going? And he had a pillow in his hand. And he said, eh, eh, I'm going to the toilet. He says, What, with a pillow? He says, Well, just in, just in case I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> One of my least favourite jobs was having to uh, tell the boys to go to bed. And each each night I had to do it with a different member of staff. So it was actually quite funny um, for me to see the approach of each member of staff. You had like Alistair Garrett who, who got quite nervous. He didn't want, really want to tell people to go to bed and tried to be Mr. Nice Guy, you know. And then obviously you had people like Chris who just took the hard line to play the bath cop. So that, that was quite a fun thing for me to, to experience. And to think that 
Fred and Jerry, Pam, myself, have been involved all these years. It's extraordinary, really. It's very rich, but it, it was a wonderful experience mixing with so many different people. You know, you grew up a much better person for it. So in my first year, I'm all quiet, sitting at the back of seconds. Leading the section was Layla and Michael, and they had a competition going to see who could learn everyone's names first. And so Layla went round and she named, I think she named everyone. And then Michael went round and he named everyone except for me. Oh. And so I was sitting there and I was, I was this quiet wee second year. And it's funny because me and Michael are pretty good friends now. Yeah. So he, he had no idea who I was in my second year. And it's, it's, it's really embarrassing. So I hope you me. never let him live that down. I hope you remind I never let him live it down. I've, yeah. I've, I've brought it up many times. That, the thing is though, right, it's all very well saying, you know, Layla, oh, Layla was, she really got me through that last day. She just abused you the whole week. You yeah. think, <laughs> she turned, she turned around and she go, you tech, what are you doing? You're, you're just, you're just, what is that boy? What are you doing, Michael's saying that? No, to be fair, we'd always have the wrong going, the two of us, like, probably half the time it was my fault, but we would just... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You, you shouldn't admit that. I think, no, I think it was because at the concert day, I think you'd missed a couple of page turns because you were tired, which was fair. And then, like, obviously that had got stressed because I was leading... Was I leading the second yeah. night? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I think you were like, oh, the second violins are never good enough and I'm going to lead them to glory. <laughs> <laughs> Did you lead them to glory? I thought me and Michael were quite good. I thought I we... we were quite good, actually. We, we were all just in the staff room minding our own business and Andy took it upon himself to sing Where Is Love from all over the music. Whoa, 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 whoa. Quite surprising, but actually very good. It's very good performance. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> along, uh, along those same lines, I seem to remember an incident where Rachel Smart was doing some karaoke and dropped it, um, a, a, a 2,000 pound iPad off a music stand. Um, these are all things that happened after after people went to bed. Yeah. So and then just kept sure going as if nothing ever happened. Quitting. I was like, yeah, it's Friday, don't worry. Quite a few things that um, yeah are not to be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> I have the memory of Trish hosing us down with really cold water after a shaving foam fight. One of my favourite moments was me dressed up in the, the, the wetsuit, hosing you all down after your... Um, <laughs> Saving foam fight, do you remember that? And just like, ah, we were like, ah, and there was like midges all stuck to the shaving foam and it was like in our ears and our mouths. Full of midges and you weren't allowed in the back into Antony unless you'd been hosed down. That was one of the most terrifying things I have ever yep. done. Same. Getting Same. As, a, like, as a 12 year old, getting chased by like 18 year olds with like shaving <laughs> foam. On the shaving foam fight and it's traumatic and then you come in and Trish is like, ah! <laughs> and Freezing water and midges. But what fun I had hosing you all down with a cold hose, it was good. She's I'm quite glad cackle. we got rid of that yeah. tradition. She was cackling. She was just like, ah! Yeah, once was enough. That's funny because Trish named that as one of her favourite memories from GSSA. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sing for Your Supper, I thought it was really good. It was a really nice way of like bonding with Very your wholesome. Step. Yeah, um, Sing for Your Supper was great. I was so nervous, I was so nervous, but it was so fun. It was so much fun. Because like, just everyone was doing it and everyone was having a laugh. We, we did a Taylor Swift one, I remember that. We did Taylor Swift. Either that or I was in a different section. I learned about how to write parody lyrics for songs, that's a transferable skill. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still yeah. use that to this day? No, but I could if I wanted to. Rounders as well. Oh when yeah, the orchestra rounders. played rounders in Argentina. <laughs> Rachel was always sending me to like go get people and I had to like go into everyone's room and be like, Rachel Smart wants you to play around here. <laughs> oh no, I just remember Miss Smart walking around just like abs dressed fabulously, like in this long skirt yeah. and then she just like it's like with a bat over her shoulder, just I'm... like walking around, just like let's play rounders. <laughs> That's my favorite. I like rounders. Do you remember when they tried to take the piano like through the kitchen? Oh my god. It got, it got jammed like halfway in between two of the things and then they just left it. I just remember beds like snapping all the time and like... Yeah. Oh, good yeah. The seniors doing the bed bag like, dances, they were really cool. <laughs> they were really cool. We did it to Bootylicious, I remember kids. <laughs> and I can't really dance yeah. at all. I actually think from that moment onwards I was like, 
wow, people here aren't actually that bad and everyone's really funny and like, I should stop taking myself so seriously and just, <laughs> and just do it because it was fun. I thought I was going to put hours in and then see if you just don't take yourself seriously, everything's fun. And then, That's just life, but, life in general. It's still a tradition, like people do that every year still, I love that. Oh, I really liked the London Symphony, I thought it was really good. Anna was uh, a good soloist that year. I did cry quite a lot that week. It was stressful. That was the you, first year I led the section not, and I not, was not no, up to I, it. I remember Layla gave me a big hug just before we went into dinner and was like, please stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> like every time we'd all come back, like Layla or Zane would like come up and be like, oh yeah, Kitty cried a bunch this week, lol. <laughs> it's a concert. And then I remember the first week, like Kitty didn't cry for ages and Zane was like, just wait, just wait. <laughs> After one rehearsal, Kate just ran out carrying her viola and then I went up to and she's like, she's crying. I really enjoyed GSSO, I love it. I did used to take the criticisms quite personally. This makes it sound like I hated GSSO, I actually really enjoyed it. So. Yeah, we're just talking about it now. Is this going to make it into the film in my life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've carried the title of Miss Boop on with me through my life. I remember I, when I make a tit of myself the regularly. year that, that we were there together, we both had a little tit from Miss Boob and everyone was like, ha <laughs> What is the best thing you played with GSSO? Does there anything that stands out? <laughs> the cello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember going to see them in the school's concert when you did Nielsen, was it Nielsen 5, Layla? Yeah, it was Nielsen 5. <laughs> Oh, the Neil, I did not like the Neil, so I'm going to Neil's in space. I was playing timpani in that and it was so fun. It was yeah. first year, so all you had to do was count like 900 bars and then you had yeah. like a timpani solo. But it was just like this suspense of the whole thing. Like, I could count this whole thing and just mess my part entirely. And, and it, was, <laughs> it was about the war. It was, yeah. it was impressive. It was really dramatic. Well, like, these poor Very kids dramatic. Through it. Yeah. I remember being like, I should do this. This is fun. Okay. My earliest memory is going to see Jesus O in the Gallic School and then managing to fall asleep during uh, Nielsen. Uh, <laughs> a just famously like a really loud, aggressive, <laughs> angsty piece and I just put my head down and fell asleep. I then just remember on that first evening when we arrived and we had our first sort of nighttime rehearsal. It was just, oh my God, it was a disaster. And the fact that Within the space of the next four days, it went from being non-playable to being concert ready, or as close to concert ready as Nielsen's fifth was ever going to be. It was actually such a sense of achievement afterwards, but trying to learn it, oh my god. Do you remember also in that concert you did Malcolm Arnold's uh, Scottish Dances? (laughs) Yes. And uh, the end of the first <laughs> movement. <laughs> oh! The end of the first... <laughs> this is a good memory, actually. Yeah. This yeah. is actually one, of, one thing that has haunted me. And uh, I've never done anything quite so embarrassing in my whole <laughs> yeah. professional career. At the end of the first movement. Dun, dun, la, da, 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 rest, da. And of course, uh, I played the crotchet in the rest. kind of thought, play, play it cool guys, you know, don't give it away. It, it could have been anyone and they all turned <laughs> at me, so uh, they completely gave the away. Actually, I had a story about Grace Dick. We, in 1973, we did the Miraculous Mandarin, Bartok. <laughs> and uh, it's a real racket. You know, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was all trash bang wallop. <laughs> really loud, and we finished it, and John Carew, who was conducting, turned to Grace Dick and said, a mistake here at the, the child, and she was just snoozing away. <laughs> so he decided oh, not I to remember it up that. and carry it away. <laughs> <laughs> Dvorak's New World Symphony. It's the first proper symphony I ever played. Everyone was so into it and we were like we're all there for the same reason and it was just like I hold it very close to me. It's such a good piece. <laughs> Borden 2 was just great. I love Borden 2. <laughs>
Put that on the record. Put it on the record. Zayn, Zayn loves Borden's Second Symphony. It's so memorable. I can sing you so many different bits from all the different movements. <laughs> oh my god. What a classic tune. <laughs> Do you want us to just name all the pieces? You remember the Vorjak number eight? I like Vorjak eight. That's my favorite. Put that on the record. Oh, the Vorjak. at the end. That is good. <laughs> Yeah, no, I remember playing Vorjak 8 and then you guys played it, play, played Vorjak 9 a few years later and I went to see it. You were playing at the RCS, I think? Yeah, no, yeah. Ernie. Yeah, and I was like, well, wow, they've really moved up in the world from Bannerman. You were all RCS playing <laughs> Great times. Like, that was Big Bony, right? Mm. Was good. Yeah. Yeah, the first year I went, Fred was Secret Idol as well. Um, and, but the, the big piece for me that year was pictures at an exhibition. And we had oh, Dougie yeah. Boyd on oboe, um, and oh, yeah. just superstars that were in the orchestra as you say, going back, yeah. and just been blown away. Some of the brass playing as well was just stupendous. It was amazing. So I think probably Carnival was, it was just oh. it was crazy and ridiculous at the time. I had no idea what I was doing for some of it. But I think it was just great that we managed to actually play it like well at the concert and it all worked. And, and it was good. I, I think Mountain, Bear Mountain was the first time I ever heard, it was one of the first pieces I played I think and it was just so exciting, I just remember being really excited. I kept getting lost because I kept watching the violins and getting lost in the bass section but it was great. <laughs> it wasn't you fancied. <laughs> <laughs> that same year we did a concert in our broth, our broth of theatres on the harbour and uh, we did uh, Thomas Tallis Fantasia. Oh, and it was such a, a fantastic piece. But I remember at the end of that concert, the huge chord at the end died away and died away. And it just left the sound of seagulls. It <laughs> <laughs> really seemed, seemed part of the piece. It just seemed so appropriate. And that's, that's the... Beethoven 5. Yeah. Uh, that, that was our first year, wasn't it? That was our first year and I'd never done anything like that and it was just so big and exciting and because it was a famous one that you already knew as well, you were like, oh, I'm in an actual orchestra. Yeah. Maybe, probably New World Symphony or maybe, I feel like the first year I joined, the first like time I went to Argentina, we played Beethoven's Fifth and I feel like because that's such a like classic. <laughs> uh, well, like Fred was saying, I think sometimes the impact of the first big piece you do, for me, as I said before, Sibelius 2. But Sibelius 2 kind of followed me around because the first time I decked with the BBC Scottish and it was Sibelius 2. And then when I joined the SNO, the first piece that we recorded was Sibelius 2. <laughs> so it's kind of a piece that's followed me throughout my career. And, and it's a piece I just love intensely. It's still with me, 60 years later. I think for me, it was um, the London Symphony Vaughan Williams, just because that was something that I did when I was in youth orchestras, and it was a really nice memory to then be on the other side. Sort of thing. The London Symphony was my first that I played with GSSO. It was one of the hardest things I've ever played, and only really until like the last couple of days of Tinny was I actually sort of understanding my part. And it was just, a, it kind of felt as a huge accomplishment. There are fry shoots, because as a horn player, that's just horn city. The Egmont Overture by Beethoven. Oh, all the Beethoven. And I think that was with, that was, was it Mr. Gary that um, conducted that one? Yeah, that would make sense actually. The Hall of the Mountain King was good as well. I think that must have been, that must have been ages ago though, like four years ago. I quite, I quite enjoyed playing the dance on, um, because as a percussionist, it's got, it's got a bit of groove to it. You can have a little, you can have a little boogie. Um, so yeah, that was probably my favourite one. My favourite was definitely Dan's on. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. Dan's on. Uh -huh. Dan. yeah. It was great. I like Borjak 9. I thought that was good. In Borjak 9, there was like an oboe solo and I got it wrong every single time, but I hadn't like really realised that I was getting it wrong every single time. I just played. And then one at the concert, I remember Anna McKenzie had like mucked something up so she was crying and I came backstage and she was like, well done Beth, you finally got it in tune. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. If no one's going to shower Anna McKenzie, uh, she was really great in the last concert when she did her Sanson. Um, yeah. That was so sick. After in the break, 
seeing her and being like, oh, and she was like, what? And we had a big hug. <laughs> and that was pretty good. <laughs> Those were, yeah, those were the exact noises. What was it like doing the concerto? Were you, were you terrified or...? No, well, I was nervous, but, like, we'd done it, we'd run it through, and also I'd, I'd played it before with my school orchestra. That was so gorgeous, like, honestly, I just remember doing it, and, like, my uh, mom and sister weren't gonna come before, but I was just like, okay, no, we have, like, this amazing soloist, you have to come. <laughs> I noticed as well, during bits where it was just hard, we were all waiting to come in looking at other people just watching and listening to her and it just felt so like unifying like we were all like trying to work towards something together and we oh just i was listening to that the other day it's it's so amazing i oh i miss it i miss listening to anna rehearsing and also because bernie is my teacher i don't know i had like a lot of confidence in him so he actually in the concert i did mess up a little bit but i think Either me or Bernie actually managed to save it, so I don't really notice. Yeah, it was really, I, I loved it. And like, it was really, it's a nice environment. Like, you don't feel so nervous because no one's like, you're not competing against anyone. Everyone's wanting you to play well. Mm-hmm. And like, after everyone be like, oh, that was really good. I'm like, oh, So, yeah, it was, it was really good. And then at the, at the concert, obviously, it went well and everyone like, really went for it. So, it sounded really good. What's the best piece you've played with GSS I'm probably pretty biased with the Brooks, to be honest, if I know it inside out. I really liked when Ruri did Brooks Violin Concerto, I thought that was really lovely. Yeah. I was going to say that's, that's probably my favourite memory from GSSOs, because like, we'd played in orchestra with Ruri for like quite a long time, and then he'd obviously left the orchestra and come back to play the Brooks Violin Concerto. That was very emotional, I think. I really enjoyed, so, in Argentinian rehearsals with Brooke, I was warming up in a, one of the one of the dorms that you can see the hall from. I can kind of hear snippets of the opening of the house and then you have to walk down that long kind of daunting corridor yeah. and you get into the first and then we ran through the first moment and it all went really well and the moments sort of hours after that first rehearsal I was so much more relaxed than I had been in months <laughs> and, and I kind of knew that the concert was going to go how I wanted it to. Um. Because we were all concentrating so hard as well, and just really following the conductor. And at the end, he played a trad set with his mum. And I think I remember that. that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. He added a whole jazzy midsection to that that wasn't I wasn't ready for. So we had to I had to practice my arse off to get that bit right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Was- it was really nice, and because it was my last year as well, and like a bunch of us were leaving, it was just it was very emotional, and it was an amazing piece as well. So. I remember watching that and like watching everyone cry while they were playing it in the orchestra. I was like, that was, like, yeah, the second movement, I just had like tears down my face. I was like, yeah. oh, and the fact that I didn't cry was amazing. That we were playing at the Bruch Violin Concerto and me managing to play that slow movement without a tear in my eye. Very proud. Well, I think Rue getting the Tower Award from his pappy because obviously he died later that year. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that was a big moment. I think it's Highland Cathedral. I still love it to this day. Oh. Oh. Especially when you hear it spontaneously being played in Germany. Oh, you you play Highland Cathedral when you're eight years old in junior strings and you're standing at the back crushed with like 15 other kids and you're just kind of making it up and you don't know when to come in and the conductor points at you and you just make it up. And you play when you're in intermediates but still sitting at the back. And then finally, like when you get to sit in the symphony orchestra and play Highland Cathedral, you feel so grown up, except obviously you're not, you're like 14, um, but you still feel really important and you play all the bowings and do your vibrato and then it's Christmas because you play Highland Cathedral. Yeah, and it's, because I remember you sit at the back with everyone else, or you stand at the back, and I remember, you know, you look at the people at the front and you're like, oh, it's so big, it's yeah. so big. And look at, look at their vibrato, holy guacamole, you know. That's, we're talking Ivo Lloyd Young levels. These guys are pros. <laughs> you know it. And then, and then in like, I well, got like, you know, ten years. Well, not ten. You know, under ten years, and you're up there, and you're like, oh, and you're looking at the weak kids at the back. We were just like, going, look at my, <laughs> look, at my Ivo Lloyd Young, look at my Ivo Lloyd Young vibrato. And the tutors are amazing. It's kind of yeah. Hard. They work Saturdays, they work Sundays, they work all week. The effort and dedication that all the tutors have is like what makes it just that 
but and it really bit. it really comes through in the way they teach us and we all develop like really good bonds with the tutors um, i think that's what's really nice for me i think that i've really really got to know a lot of, of pupils and um, especially with having Saturday morning as well, I think it's really nice to build a really good relationship. And then you know some of the section each year, but then there'll be new people as well. I think that it's nice for the pupils to see all the staff in a bit of a different light as well. When you're in school, you don't necessarily have as much time. Um, and I think it's just a really relaxed atmosphere and the kids can see the staff in a, in a slightly different way as well. It's, it's not like a situation where you're kind of scared of your tutors and scared of the yeah. which it so often is they're so friendly and they're so you know you could go up to them and say oh I don't know how to do this and not feel bad about it at all. A hundred percent yeah. Yeah it's so nice to get to spend time with staff because there's so many staff you don't actually get to see all year round and I think going in the residential, it's as much as staff interaction as well as staff and pupils and things. It's, it's really nice. It is really nice because it is a lot of stuff that we have to do because we don't have separate, when we were in NIOS, it was separate house staff, separate tutors. Um, and again, I don't think that's as good because you don't get to know. So I like how we do everything so that then we can really get to know you. There's no egos with the staff. Everybody just mucks yeah. in mm -hmm. and yeah. the kids know that we're mm -hmm. part of what, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of very fluid, I would say. Yeah. yeah. I like that they put up with all the jokes and everything as well. My favourite bit is when Fred gets sexiest tutor. Yeah. <laughs> it's the highlight of our entities. I think you, we get to really bond with all the tutors, which is really nice. Jack and Ruth, both of them were just the funniest people ever. Like, I literally loved both of them. They just made it so funny. Like, I remember really liking, like, little sectionals. Oh, yeah, the yeah. tutors were all good. Oh yeah, Ali. Alistair. What a boy. Mr. Gary, who, take, who was taking French one sectionals, is literally one of the sweetest people I have ever met. I, like every year we do a kind of different thing in the morning to get our minds going because we're all exhausted. We were learning a word of Russian every day. And then at the end, like he gave the entire section a book on Russian and it had a really sweet note in it. And he was like, I could have got you all a copy, but I think that would have been pointless. I want to give you all one copy so you have to talk to each other and you have to like pass it about and you all like you all kind of oh. have that one thing but like between you. And I was like, people don't think of like like that. <laughs> it was just so sweet. It's very friendly and it's very it's a really good place to like learn and also just like be confident as well. I gotta give a big shout out to Andy because that man is just wonderful <laughs> and he put so much into everything I don't know just seemed to really care about you and want you to do well and improve and sometimes you get a bit of tough love if you <laughs> weren't pulling your weight he wasn't one to, to muck about he was someone that I just so admired all the time as percussionists we had two like super different forms of teaching Dorothy Gunning was incredibly like hard on the discipline and the self-improvement. Yeah, it was like some sort of military regime. You improved at an, inc an incredibly fast rate. And then we had the other side, which was Ruth Innes. Life and soul of the party. Yeah, and then that life trickles into how you play and you play in like a more excited way. Gotta give a, a, a shout out to Pam. Pamela Black deserves so much more recognition and love and respect and everything than she'll ever get from anyone. Cause uh -huh. she's like, she I is no woman. If you have an issue, you go to Pam. She's always such a lovely person to be around. What would Pam want to hear? Pam's great. Pam's <laughs> black. Pam had she was everything the in control. She was the perfect mix of stern and if you did wrong, then she would tell you you were wrong, but like really nice about it at the same time. Like mm -hmm. me and Leon all being late, she could have absolutely <laughs> slapped us out, but instead she just made us feel really, oh, I want to do better for Pam. That's nice. Yeah, I think yeah. she was there. For, she was she, there for the right reasons too. Like she genuinely cared about us. We love Pam yeah, so much that we had, we, had, we had stickers made that say, I heart Pam. I didn't ever really fully appreciate it, how, how well it was organized by Pam. Um, because yeah. trying to organize it- Pam's great. Yeah, at like a uni level, because there's no teachers or tutors helping you. You just have to do it yourself with your committee. And there's just so much faff. And I only really appreciate now, like three years later or four years later, how much like Pam and everyone do and all the tutors do. And booking venues and getting sheet music. Sheet music's expensive. I didn't know that yeah. oh. either. Yeah. One of my favourites was the first rehearsal we had with Bernie. 
because I was so nervous about a new conductor but he was just so hilarious and upbeat and I just like saw the music in a different way with him so I just loved him. I feel like you get to know conductors so much better than anyone else in an orchestra. Mm. They are the lifeblood of the entire group. I felt so confident in him and the fact that like you had that and then he's also obviously very personable and likeable. It made it a really like obviously good experience. Bernie, we have him conducting, which is amazing, mm-hmm. like absolutely amazing, because it's all that experience he has, and he can like project that onto us. And um, I think I've become a lot more confident in my playing and with people, like talking to people I don't know. Like I, I'm not quite as nervous about playing in front of people as I might have been before. I'd agree with that as well, like the confidence thing, and like I just I was quite surprised at myself how I like got help there and how I improved by the end of the week, I feel like I improved quite a lot. It taught me how to make friends with people in different schools or places and I actually think that has been a very useful skill like being at uni and like having to speak to loads of different people it's it's really easy I think because of GSSO immediately you have to make new friends and I think that's actually quite a good quite a good skill to have. Um, I think it gave me quite a lot of confidence because there was like quite a lot of bits where it was just me playing and like at the start before I went there would just be like big gaps where no one would play and everyone would be like, where's the oboe? Because I wasn't playing. <laughs> I think by the end of the week, I kind of just came in whether I was like right or wrong. And I was usually wrong, but I still gave it a go. Yeah, and at the so end. I think it gave me quite a lot of confidence. To, it's yeah. better to be wrong and play something than to not play anything at all. Yeah, that's, that's the words I live by. So true. That's another sound bite. It, it forces you to do things you wouldn't normally do and without it, like, I wouldn't be who I am today. I think it helps your confidence meeting so many new people and all being at completely different levels of playing. And it's one of those things where you're sort of like a whole, you're like a whole load of new people are thrown at you um, at uh-huh. once. And it was the sort of first time since starting high school that I'd met so many new people. And it was, it's quite daunting, but everyone's just so nice and welcoming that. No, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and not, not just their playing though, also, Personally, you know, we've yeah. had some quite recently who have come down in tears, you know, really they can't do it. And then they, it's as if they go back up to their dorm and the kids all take them on board and help them all just coming together and growing as people. It's, it's amazing, actually, mm-hmm. in a, such yeah. a short space of time. I yeah. think it's nice. It's nice to see either the younger ones or the, the more sort of lacking in confidence kids yeah. being taken under the wing from some of the ones who've been there, you know, for, for longer. It's great to see that, you know, and the difference in those kids from the beginning of the course to the end of the course, just in their own confidence. And, you know, it's, it's lovely to see that. I think, I think for me, a lot of it, especially as a percussionist, you get a lot of confidence from it. Because you really have to, you sort of have to believe in yourself so much that you can bang this huge gong or this massive drum like once in the whole of a piece and there's no going back. So you really have to just commit to it no matter what and trust in yourself. So I think that sort of self-belief is one of the most important things. And because it's kind of like you're part of a team, so you don't want to, you know, it, it like pushes you to practice. Yeah, you don't want to let down the rest of your section if you're not practicing. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. It kind of gives me a reason to practice. Um, I feel that double bass is more of a group instrument than a solo one. I mean, we kind of are like glue to the others. It kind of belongs to something else. Mm-hmm. I think it really just gives me, it kind of reminds me why I practice, why I have lessons, why I do Samandal studies, which are so <laughs> boring. Because then it means that you can just go and play with people and you can actually kind of, you can contribute enough. And there is no better feeling than being in a group of call it a hundred people, and making this piece of music come together. Even with all the painstaking practices, even with the amount of effort that takes, when you're actually sitting there in the concert hall, playing it for a group of people, and you've got a hundred people working together in sync on this, and making this magical thing called music, there's no better feeling than that. We really took for granted like how much symphony orchestra rep like we were able to play, I think, that's something that you don't get in a lot of like counties. I think GSSO is quite unique. It's really cool that like as a 13 year old or 14 year old or whatever, I played like Vojak 8 in an orchestra and we were given that opportunity. And it does mean like we're really experienced compared to people that maybe are actually better at our instruments than us because 
someone said, oh, do you want to play in a symphony orchestra? It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that the, the difference from day one to the concert is night and day, and it always makes us so excited to hear how fantastic that you can get. And you do all fly by the seat of your pants. It can go very long at times, but you always pull out the bag. It's magic, it's, it's perfect. It's the, that collective journey that you all go on to go, right, here we are, pick it up, we're off, we're going from there. It's brilliant. It's an experience that you'll never get anywhere else for that many people. Knowing that I can do that is such a kind of powerful thing going forward into like uni and stuff like that. Because I think it's one of the only things that's given me a proper work ethic. It was lovely how people kind of like along the way teach you and you get better at music as you go on mm -hmm. because of the people you're surrounded with and all that. Cool. Well, I, I would just say from all sorts of angles and continuing to work with kids, it's just the difference from the start to the finish and what young people are capable of is amazing. Yeah. It really is. I'm always uh, really impressed by what happens. It's one of these genuine things that the whole is much greater than the sum of the parts. It was the first time that I saw a system come together to make something happen. Like when you joined GSSO, it's one of the first times that you realized that so many different people can be like a necessary part of some like much bigger whole. Mm -hmm. Like literally every section and every individual player, once you break it down, is completely necessary for any of the, the pieces. And it's just amazing how that all comes together. Yeah. yeah. Kids end up doing things that they're actually really couldn't have done. Yeah. But as a group, they, they end up doing, as, as Jerry says, some, some phenomenal things. They really do surprise you. I, I do always really enjoy it. at the end of the first rehearsal and all of the staff are like, I think we might need to cancel the concert. So by the end of the week or so, it, it always it always comes together. So that's always really nice to see. Like the work that everyone put in, I was amazed. But then at the same time, similar to what Millie was saying, when you just kind of realise like, no one's judging you, everyone's just too worried about their own part. As long as you like try your best and have fun, chances are it'll work out pretty good. I think it's actually made me less afraid to pursue a career in music, you know? I've always been a bit scared of that, but it's shown me that it is possible and it's great fun. It was my first like experience of like playing in an orchestra. Like it was the friendship stuff, but also like the music and like how the friendship like with other people and also like playing music with those same people. Like that kind of coming together, if that makes sense. Like I just, that's just what I love about being in an orchestra, like playing music with friends basically. And it's, I just like, I loved it so much. I was like, I would love to do this as a career, just like for the rest of my life, so. I mean, for some of us, it gave us a lifetime of music, but I mean, professionally, Jerry and Fred, but, and teaching, but um, there's lots of others who just continue to play, play in the amateur orchestras, play for, for Jerry and myself. And, and it's fantastic, because it gives them that interest. And, it, and it's the, the same when they're adults, it crosses all these different professions and uh, people come together. I just remember, you know, the memories of the tunes that you played every time you hear the tune again all these years later, it just brings back all the memories of playing. I think it's great as well because the kids, you can see that they actually love playing. They all go to different schools and I think it's really cool that GSSO brings everyone together as well. It also brings families together because my parents are separated and like can hardly spend like half an hour in a room together, but like the family will come and then like watch me play and it's just like really nice because it's bringing the family together and it's like it's a really nice experience just to have like in that year you know i think um it immediately took away like playing in a symphony orchestra and i've like i play in a symphony orchestra at uni probably just the experience of playing in a symphony orchestra that is just it, it, i don't know it just gets me every single time like i can't believe that <laughs> In 2018, when we were rehearsing for the concert in Stevenson Hall, and then we were playing the third movement of the Malcolm Arnold. It's like a really slow, beautiful movement and set in a heavy piece or something. And then I just like had a eureka mo moment like halfway through it. I was like, whoa, maybe I actually want to do a career in music. 
months. So like after that concert, I was literally like inspired just that summer. I just practiced so much. And then like I went from back seconds to front desk. And then afterwards, I'm auditioning for RCS and other places this year. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think it's the first time for a lot of us that we've chosen to become friends with someone rather mm -hmm. than just being put with them by circumstance. What makes it special is the whole social aspect, aspect of it and the fact that you can make really, really, really good friends from it as well as improving your playing like a ridiculous amount. People make friendships for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's a really important part of, of these courses. And when you realise that music can also be a community and that it can draw all these different people together and you can play but now you also have all these people that you're sharing moments with and friendships. So such an unjudgmental group of people like everyone's so different but you have music in common so you don't judge each other. You probably <laughs> would never have met people like that unless you joined the orchestra. Walking around the streets it's like every corner you're like oh I know they're from Jesus I'm like oh there's mm. them there's so and so and if you realize that you actually know half of Glasgow from playing yeah, in Jesus you take so many friends away like it's even people yeah. who you didn't think that you'd be friends with you feel like within the whole orchestra being a support network you've got your own kind of support network of it's my first time going and I've never been before, but this person is in that school. On the last day, I think it's really nice as well because quite often, like, we all go down to the beach together and it's like the whole orchestra, but not because, like, we have to, just because we're all friends. It was just such a wonderful day. Everyone was so happy. The sun was shining. It was almost film-like. We just came back and had dinner or something, so... Surreal about it all. I don't think I've ever felt so free, if I'm honest. Yeah. Like everything was always positive there, so it was just such a safe place to be and such a loving place as well. And then, so you just always look forward to being there. You don't, you don't have a seat in the orchestra, you know, everybody seems to get along and muck in with each other, and that is a real testament to the young people who go along. The good thing about it is it's not clicky. It is weird like that, but I think that's good. Another thing that was really nice is that there isn't lots of cliques and groups, like everybody gets on so well together. Yeah, that's true, because they, they gather up people and get them into their gang as well. It's nice, yeah. That, yeah, they look after each other. You, you're getting better as a player and as a musician because you're comfortable around the people that you're playing with. No, to be fair, everyone's a bit weird. Everyone's kind of weird together, so it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I remember saying that to my mum after I started. I was like, Mum, it's really odd, like, everybody's everybody's weird, but it doesn't matter. No. And mum was like, good for you. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> it was exciting because I hadn't been playing bass for a long time, so I was looking for experiences. And obviously it was a bit nerve-wracking because you don't know whether people will be warming, but I was very welcome by everyone. I think there's more to music than just playing it. You're there for the people as well. Give me the opportunity, first time to lead an orchestra. It's a really nice place to do that for the first time because I've spent so long in that orchestra already that you know everyone in the orchestra, so you're not hearing first flute and second of one. You're mm -hmm. hearing kind of everyone by their first name. Mm -hmm. It's a really supportive environment to lead in. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had such a good time like in my life to be honest. I mean, I don't really think of Valentini's like days. It was just kind of like a time and every day was fantastic. Like I woke up, I was happy, went to bed happy. Well, I think Jesus was the first time that I was ever like in a big group of people who actually wanted to do music, who actually wanted to sit down and create something like that, something as beautiful as that. And knowing that there was people out there who shared that same view about music, who just wanted to just make it and make it as best as I could. And like these people could like want to be around me and want to like hang out with me. It was just life changing. It, it, it told me, I don't know, something amazing about people.
What have you taken away? Yeah. Create, I mean, hundreds of create ties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lots of create ties. I've had a create ties. I've had a create ties. I've got. I want to say love of create ties. You know, you just have to hold them. Obviously, being not from Scotland, uh, I haven't really done very much like residential courses in Scotland, and this one is just by far the best out of the ones I've done. It's it's fantastic, and I'm so lucky to be a part of it. And uh, hopefully, for the for the foreseeable future, it'll just keep going and going and going and keep thriving and thriving. I've never been on a course that's had so much coleslaw in my life. <laughs> I know it's great, isn't it? You can literally have coleslaw with every meal. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing as well, I think, in the whole sense of community, but also how accessible it actually was. If you had the talent and if you wanted to show the commitment and you were keen to do it, you could do it. I was actually thinking about that, like what would we have been without like the Glasgow music scene? I think we would be so different. It's just really nice to see how even though all the kids change and the years change and even though it's changed from being in Castle Tower to Argentini, just what it is, it's just, it's about making music, about making friends, and it's about keeping the spirit of GSSO. It's a reflection of, of the Glasgow School's system, right? And, and GSSO is kind of the cherry cake there, but the, there's a broader system underneath that that's training musicians. Like you said, Julia, you know, regardless of economic background, I know that some schools struggle more than others to get um, access to teachers and instruments and things, and you know, that, that's something we should continue to um, work to improve. But uh, compared with other parts of the UK and certainly compared to the US, where nobody gets a formal music education in any public school system, to reflect on what we have in Glasgow, it's, it's really, really special. Just raw access to music, music education, to instruments, and to incredibly passionate teachers who could make a lot more money doing other things, but they're in it to help students um, be their best and provide opportunity that's equal for all. A largely non-competitive, supportive atmosphere to play music and to create something, which I haven't really found to the same extent anywhere since. I think I think one of the great things, really, that we have to thank you know administrators over the years is that it's kept going all these years there were times really when you thought you know is you know is it going to last is it going to keep mm -hmm. going you know and yep. and the fact that it has you know and that glasgow for all its difficulties has maintained this orchestra for all these years you know i think is a great testament to the city but hopefully you know, that's, that's going to be maintained because, you know, it's something that the city should be very proud that it has maintained this heritage for such a long period of time. Um, I think everything about it works really well and, like, I, yeah, I just hope that it continues the way that it is. The orchestra has carried on and it's yep. found its own identity, it's kept its identity. Yeah, it's um, kept. <laughs> with the young people who, who are there, and that's testament, you know, to the young people who go and how much they, they enjoy it as well. Otherwise, they wouldn't come back. I could say I that I've taken away friendships that last a lifetime. I could say that I've taken away an appreciation of music that will see me through all my years. I could say that I have taken away how to make friends, but what I've really taken away is a ton of creative guys. <laughs>